Hey everybody, Josh here for Your Turn Go. Today I'd like to tell you about Colonial Horror, which is in a standalone expansion to Flying Frog Productions' Dark Gothic Deck Builder. Uh, this game takes place in a colonial American times with monsters roaming around and you're just trying to defeat them. It is a deck building game, so it has a lot of similar things that you would expect from a deck building game, but it has quite a few twists in it that I think you'll like. So I'll tell you about it and tell you what I think. At the beginning of the game, every player will select a hero. Every hero has a different starting deck based on their stats, combat, cunning, spirit, and possibly honor. Every character also has a particular ability that will give them some leverage, some special ability during the game. Uh, here we have Inspector Cook, and he is a very cunning gentleman, so his cunning is pretty high, 7. Uh, so let me show you his starting deck. He had a combat of 2, so he's going to have 2 combat cards, strength of combat cards. He was a very cunning guy, so he has 7 strength of cunning cards. And he had a little bit of spirit, so he has two Strength of Spirit cards. And he also has one Honor, which is not uh, true for every character. Honor is a pretty pretty powerful card. You can see it, it's a white one, which you can use as a wild card when the card is played. Also lets you draw a card, so he's going to have draw uh, card draw abilities at the very beginning of the game. So Honor is pretty important. As usual, you would shuffle this deck, place, place it face down, and you would draw your hands from turn to turn from this deck. Throughout the game, you can buy cards from the center row, or you'll also have access to these training cards. The training cards each have a plus two on them, and they're bought for three of the same color resource. So your starting cards have plus one, the training ones have plus two. So you would use these to get a, a jump on the enemies and to buy gear and whatnot that you necessarily couldn't do at the very beginning of the game. In addition to heroes, you also have villains, of course. There are actually three levels of villains. Here we have a level 1 villain, you have level 2 and level 3 villains. As you can imagine, the level 1 villains are easier to defeat than the 2 and the 3. So when you prepare the game, you randomly choose a level 1, a level 2, and a level 3, and you only expose the level 1. The level 2 and level 3 should be hidden from you until you um, encounter them. So these villains are roaming the countryside, and your job as players, as a team, is to defeat them. To defeat a villain, you need to play cards that will allow you to uh, at least equal or exceed those three values there, for spirit too cunning to combat in this case, and he's a level 1, so he's not too tough. Uh, many villains have a global effect, so in this case he's helping the ghost minions, and when you fight them you'll have a particular uh, event trigger. In this case you get to draw some extra cards. If you defeat it, then you just place the card, the villain card under your hero, and at the end of the game you'll count those VPs toward your score. Now the main deck is composed of various kinds of cards. We have location cards, gear, minions of a couple of different types, events, and lastly, allies. You buy one of these cards by equaling or exceeding the cost in the upper left there. In this case, the green, the cunning value, the cunning cost, has a red ring of blood around it. That means that the cards you use to pay for it are actually destroyed, so it's a pretty heavy cost, but he's a pretty good ally. In this case, he actually has a bad thing that happens when you acquire it. You gain a dark secret, and I'll explain that here in a minute. But after you purchase a card, whether it's an ally, a gear, minion, or whatever, it goes into your discard pile, and eventually gets pulled back into your hand when you reshuffle. Here we have an event, it's just a one-time trigger, in this case it lets you draw a card, and it gives you a discount on your gear. Here we have a minion, in fact it is a roaming minion, I'll explain that here in a minute. It costs five combat to defeat it, and so you're not exactly acquiring it, you're not buying it like gear for example, but you are defeating it and it goes into your discard pile as normal. In this case, uh, strike means that when it's played, it's going to do something bad, and in this case you have to roll the die and it, possibly bad things will happen. It does say it remains in play, so that means it stays in front of you when you play it. Here we have another minion. In this case, when you fight it, the fight ability triggers, and since this is a poltergeist, it's moving your cards around from player to player, so there's some theme built into that card. Here we have some gear. It also remains in play whenever you play it, and in this case you have a charmed relic, and it prevents cards from being destroyed, so it's a little protective device. It costs two combat, two wisdom, and one cunning, so that's kind of expensive. And lastly here we have a location. Like some of those some of those gears, uh, some of the gear cards, it remains in play. 
and it gives you a permanent bonus as it's in, when it's at, once it's on the table. It costs two combat, two cunning, the wooden barricades. Now I showed you the roaming minion earlier. This is important because at the end of every turn, roaming minions will actually move down the line. So when they're played, you're supposed to offset them a little to remind you of this. And at the end of a turn, the minion will swap places with the card on its right. If the card ever leaves the line, it goes into something called the Shadows. The Shadows is an area next to the Villain card, where cards that enter the Shadows are placed. If the Shadows ever has ten or more cards, the players immediately lose. In particular, there's a card called Lightning Strike. This one is particularly bad. When it enters the row, any card that was adjacent to it, any card that was adjacent to it, is put into the shadows along with the lightning strike. So all three of those would go into the shadows. And with a limit of ten, that's pretty horrendous. There are only, I believe, four lightning strikes in the deck, so they don't come up too often, but they are very bad when they do. Uh, going back to Reverend Harding here for a minute, it says that when you acquire this card, you also take a dark secret. A dark secret card looks like this. They're all they all look the same. It says when you play it, you or when it's in your hand, you must play it first, and when you do, you destroy it, but you draw a shocking discovery. Shocking Discoveries come in various forms, and the, none of them are good. They're all very bad permanent things that hit the table. For example, this one says, Allies cost one extra wisdom to acquire, gear cost one extra. Uh, one of these says that minions are more difficult to defeat, cost one in, costing one extra combat, uh, wherever it went. Some of these cost, um, some of these require everybody to destroy cards, or roll the omen die, which is the die the game comes with and used for various effects. But either way, the dark secrets are bad, because the shocking discoveries that they lead to will permanently harm the players, and you don't want that. So at the end of the game, if you have destroyed your 1, 2, and 3 level villain, then the players have won the game. And everyone will then go through their deck, add up the victory points, including the victory points for villains you've defeated, and whoever has the highest score was the top monster hunter, although everybody wins in the end. So this game has a lot of neat mechanics in it. In fact, you can buy expansion packs that add little thematic additions to the game. For example, there's one that can turn players to werewolves, and every so often there's a mechanic that where the moon rises, and that player who is the werewolf will attack everyone in the party. Then the moon descends and they go back to being a human again. So some of these expansions are really neat. They add thematic new qualities to the game and keep it kind of fresh. So I've played this game a few times now, and it has its hooks in me. Colonial Horror, the dark gothic deck-building game. I'm going to pick up the base copy and mix it here with this expansion to make the experience a little deeper, and I hope you do too. I recommend it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hey, thanks for watching! If you like us, subscribe!